Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, good day, wherever you are. Um, it's Rhea here, just popping on to do a Power of Three share. And the Power of Three share for me just helps me to tune into my own spiritual energy and to anchor it and to be the expression <clears throat> of, of that spiritual energy, of my true self. And so I share it because maybe some of you out there will get something from it too, or maybe it'll ignite your own spiritual passion. But um, it's all about being that clear conduit of our pure source energy because it's the spiritual energy, the spiritual part of us that our true power, wow. um, where all our true power stems because everything else is nothing but a manifestation and a reflection of that. And I'm doing it in the kitchen today. Usually I go outside, but it's raining out. So Mythos here, he uh, he's doing some of his uh, practice school work. And I usually have him do it in the kitchen, in the dining area while I'm outside. But he promised to kind of be quiet. So I'm just going to do it sitting next to him. And maybe you can join in, okay? But right now, practice, practice your words. So <clears throat> as always, I like to start with the cross breath. And this is the perfect uh, symbolic representation of who you are. You guys are light beings at essence. You are, good morning, Kim. Thank you for joining us. Um, you are at source, pure light energy. And when we bring attention to that and we step into that, it's what we already are, guys. But when you step into it, you become it. It's not something you're trying to achieve and reach for in the outside world. You are the abundance. And to live that abundance, to have your physical reality, your physical manifestation um, reflect that abundance, it's simply removing the, the blockages, the barriers that prevent you from reflecting that. Because everything truly, truly, truly does wow. stem from you. You guys are God's source creators. You are rays of light. And it all stems from your internal being. And you are always this internal being. But a lot of times we will set up our own illusionary blockages, barriers. Remember, you have to do that until I ask you. That prevent us from reflecting that. You can think of it as, all right, you guys got this... Um, secret door you get the secret room but you get this door and it's blocked and it's barricaded and it's got a paddle lock on it and all the abundance you could ever want is in there it's almost like we create these blockages these blocks these doors and we're trying to bang in we're trying to create from out here we're trying to create from the outside of us but it all comes from in here and when we can connect to that light and that energy within us we take off that padlock and that door opens up wide and then that room of treasures, abundance, however that looks for you, whether it be mental, emotional, physical, all of that, it becomes wide open to you. You become, you create that reflection of what you really are. So it's not, life isn't about trying, trying, reaching out into that outer world all the time, trying to achieve and be something we're not, trying to achieve um, recognition, affirmation, money, the perfect job, abundance, the perfect place. Because in essence, guys, we already are all of that. It's all within us. It's all within our spiritual power. But we might create and have to dissipate blocks of unworthiness, doubt, sell memories of stuff we've carried with us throughout previous lifetimes, experiences. Look. Unfolding who we are. Uh, yes, Kim. Excuse you, Mythos. <laughs> hey, good morning, Kim. Two Kims. Kim Life Coach and Kim... I never know how to say your last name. Nisastro. Thank you. I hope you have a beautiful, abundant day, too. <laughs> I can feel you buzzing from here. Oh, beautiful. I was just watching, and what's kind of ignited this whole removing blockages? Because we are abundant, it's just our own blockages that we have created through the human experience in order to illuminate the light through them. Well, I was just watching um, somebody else talk about this, and it was a channeling from Jesus' son, Johanna something, from Pamela Erlen. 
and it was really, really beautiful to watch because she really affirmed all that I that I do teach and I'm just um, bringing up that part of abundance because what do we all want? We all want abundance. We all want that beautiful life. We all want that perfect job, that perfect make, that perfect relationship. We want to be that perfect spiritual being. But what we forget sometimes, guys, is we already are. This is what we are. And when we connect to that light, I don't know why I'm getting so emotional. When we connect to that and just bring that awareness, then we can reflect it in our outer world because everything in the outer world is us. The world is within us and, and we create that. And you know how they say the universe is within us and the world is within us and that can seem kind of abstract because the world and universe is created from our light, from our love, from the connection that we have with our God source energy. And it comes down, so that comes down to the cross breath. The breath is the life giving force. We cannot live without breath. And what does the breath do? We fill our body and we connect to that inner being. It quiets the mind, it quiets the smaller ego mind that can be creating those blockages, guys, that can be preventing us from living our abundance, that might be preventing us. All those old stories of, okay, when you were a child, you were picked on, or my parents didn't love me, or I felt abandoned, or I was brought up poor, or I was stabbed, or I was lied to. And and our memory, our cells, our DNA holds that. And those are the little blockages that sometimes we are sub are running within us subconsciously that are preventing us from reflecting all that we are, all the abundance, all the light, all the love, all the fulfillment, all the peace. And when you breathe, you all of a sudden, through your intent, bring focus to the heart area, the heart and the source of all that you are. When you bring that focus to the light that you are through the breath, because when you breathe in, I like to use a visual because I'm a very visual person. So I use this as the visual that I am, as I breathe in, I am breathing in the spiritual energy that I am. I am increasing it. I am expanding it with my breath. I am loosening up those energies. Even though I don't have conscious um, knowing of what they are, as you breathe in, guys, and you hold in that air and that oxygen, it is breaking up those energies, those blockages. And because everything is light particles, as you breathe in that pure essence of love and light and air, that does dissipate the blockages. It does move energy. Even the beautiful thing is you don't have to have a complete understanding of it from the human mind. You can believe in the process. You can allow the process work for you, even if you don't understand necessarily how, or it seems too good to be true, or it seems so beautiful that too easy. It seems too simplistic to breathe in. And as you breathe in, you're culminating. You are tapping into every little particle, every little cell within your being. Imagine this is you. This is your head. These are your arms. This is your body. These are your feet planted into the physical Mother Earth experience. And through your, <laughs> through your focus on that, which is a truth, you can illuminate all the darkness. You can bring into balance your life, your mental, your spiritual, your emotional, all aspects of you through the light. Because what does the light do when you turn on a light in a dark room? Hey, good morning, John. Sorry, guys. If, I are, uh, if I'm not noticing you, I get into my mode. Thank you for joining everybody who's watching. And John, like you were talking when I was watching your thing on tapping, like John is a big advocate of tap tapping. I almost think of it as your religion, but it's not really a religion because religion can be based in false beliefs. But anyways, John says that tapping works whether you believe it or not. <laughs> well, when you take in the breath and you connect to your light, it works whether you believe it or not. Well, I don't know. If you really don't believe something, I think you're creating a blockage. I don't want to say, okay, this is a good point. Because through your belief, you allow anything to be possible or not possible. Well, if you are, please. But you can open up the door to um, 
trusting, trying something and see, even with self-doubt, the love and light is so much stronger than that because it's a higher frequency. And if you open up the door to breathing in and saying, hey, what do I got to lose? Or when you're tapping, what do I got to lose? You are still opening up and you are taking that little step of trust. Now, if you have a downright belief it doesn't work, you're going to create that. You're going to create that. And what is, what is non-belief? And not believing in something, it's closing that door. It's putting that padlock on that secret room full of treasures. So belief is extremely powerful. I don't want to dismiss it. But if you can open up just a little bit and just be open and say, okay, I'm going to try this and see. I'm going to try and see if it works. And if you give it that tiny little opening, just like water flowing or light flowing. Okay, this is a better analogy. Light throw, flowing through that tiny crack, guys. If you just give it that tiny crack to peek through, that little keyhole, it illuminates so much. It can illuminate the darkness. It can bring into light and, and release those blockages that you weren't even aware of. That tiny little pin, that tiny little crack under a door, if the light gets through it to a dark room, it has so much power. And that's the power that you guys allow by just being open. This is taking a whole different, <laughs> different avenue. Just through being open and allowing that tiny little crack or taking that little peek into that treasure chest room, into that um, room that you have padlocked and shut or opening up that treasure chest, just by taking a little peek, you allow it. Imagine all this gold illuminating and you take that little, and you open it a little bit and all of a sudden, you got all this light shining at you. So this message is taking a different turn and I, it's just saying being open. Be open to possibilities in your life, guys. Be open doesn't need to be hard. It can be as, as simplistic as tapping. It can be as simplistic as the cross breath. And the cross breath, I, I, take, I labeled it the cross breath because what you're doing, guys, is you are anchoring your spiritual energies. And it looks like a line coming from above, but that's just symbolic. We are that energy. Nothing is outside of us. It's all in here. It's just symbolic yes. of being that higher frequency, that higher energy. And when you breathe in... You're bringing it in and you're culminating it and you're allowing it to work and you're anchoring it into your physical experience. And then when you exhale, the cross or it comes out is you are allowing that to be reflected in the world that you are living in now. How beautiful, how freaking simple and beautiful by just bringing that attention and that awareness to the light and exhaling. You have just allowed it to manifest in your life without usage of the human mind or the ego or the questions or the old cell memory and the blockages. If you just allow that and take that little step in, take that little step in and just allow it. Allow yourself to feel better. Be open, yes. Energy flow feels physically better. And it feels physically better, guys, because through that spiritual connection, that invisible connection, that's what creates your physicality. So when you tune in and connect to the light that you are, and because it's that cross breath and that platform, the heart chakra is that platform of the physical and the spiritual and bringing it all together. It is that platform of all communications of all lives that you are living right now simultaneously and you have access to all that information forever and ever and ever and ever. It's like it's your own little vault of Akashic records right here. You have that. You have that. God is all and all is God. And if you are a ray of God, then everything is within you and all accessibility is within you. All right, so... I didn't mean to make that intro to the cross breath quite so long. So we'll just take one deep breath in, and then I'll just uh, get some guidance from my book and my uh, Mother Earth. But uh, this is so simple and so beautiful because the light does penetrate the darkness. The light, bringing focus to the light, can automatically clear the blockages, just like John's tapping. Through his tapping, or you're tapping, and you're releasing, and you're creating new pathways. You, you are creating new pathways through the cross breath. You are creating new pathways through those tapping techniques. You are loosening and moving the energy. So we'll take a deep breath in through the nose, and as you breathe it in, hold it. And imagine all that energy moving, loosening the blockages. You don't have to know what they are, but loosening up that stuff that doesn't serve you. And as you release it, Push it out, that very last little. 
It's like you're pushing out that last little blockage, giving it that at last little boost. And then imagine it coming out and you're releasing that, that which doesn't serve you to be transmuted, to, to change back into love and light. But as you move those things and those blockages that don't serve you, you are creating a momentum for all that you are to push behind that. All those energies that you are in your expression of your God source energy without those blockages, now they've got momentum. Now they can move behind the blockages and you can be a more pure expression of your light source energy, the divine imprint that you came to express and to illuminate through your physical vessel of being a human, because that's why we're here, guys. That's why we're here. We all have our own light, and our light is to illuminate those uh, so-called challenges, obstacles, blockages that are illusions created by us that we chose before we were born just to expand upon, to illuminate with our light. It's a game. It was fun. We said, holy strapper, I'm going to come in, man. I'm going to take on this ordinary, horrible, heavy energy. But I know who I am. I'm God source energy. I'm a super, I'm a master light blaster. And that's what all you guys are. You're master light blasters. I'm going to pretend, I'm going to come in with a veil and a blindfold. And even in the midst of all of that, I'm going to shine my light. I am going to release the power that I am. I'm going to create a new world. And that's what we've come to do. So... Throughout the day, guys, when you're feeling like tense, anxious, <laughs> you can breathe while tapping. <laughs> breathe it in and bring that focus to the light. You don't have to have all the understandings and reasonings and, and scientific evidence of how it's working, but the light illuminates, guys. And if you're bringing focus to your entire being and you're allowing that to work and expand in every cell, every molecule of your body, you are illuminating anything that does not serve you. And it has served you. Everything is a paradox. It served you in order to give you an opportunity to shine your gift, your light, to create your modality, to find your imprint. So it's all served you. Even the shittiest of shit <laughs> has served you. <gasps> Sorry, I shouldn't say that. Even that stuff is still serving. It's still serving the light, guys. And we can choose to transcend that experience now. It's still serving whether we know it or not or aware of it. But we can actually have that physical sense of enjoyment, the pleasure of illuminating it, of transcending it. Okay, thank you, handsome. All right, guys. Hello, Melissa. Okay listening to you good morning becky i know you're east coast time listening to you opens my heart thank you so much thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you for tuning in and joining guys because your comments guys hold a vibration we are still working collectively when you know how they say when two or more are gathered i'll be there my light expands love expands we are reflections of one another and when we join in and we add our vibration it does culminate exponentially just through, and even if you don't comment, your awareness, your awareness to this little share helps to culminate and expand it. Expands the light in you and expands the light in me. Something to my mind might have, something might have been implanted for me to bring up. All because you chose to participate or share or be aware of, of, of this little share. <laughs> All right, guys. So I like to always use my uh, book here just for... Um, a little human example of how my teachings can relate to everyday life <laughs> Which lifts the energy yes Kim it lifts the energies so I always ask for our collective selves to bring something into focus it could be a blockage it could be a misunderstanding if we realize guys everything is um, valid everything is to serve the love and light ultimately it does that by our higher perception of the situation. We change it. We infuse it. We bring light to it because we are light. So I could take a, a, a bad situation in this, but I allowed my higher self to open and illuminate the truth of the situation. If that makes sense. Like, I will take something like, um, say something I saw in the news and kids getting shot and that kind of thing. I would go on my runs and I would say, what is the truth of this? Because if God is love and light, then he's in everything, everything. There has to be love and light in this situation. And ask and you shall receive. And I've always been given the answers to the highest of my capability of receiving them. 
All right. And uh, the, the paragraph that was shown today is, it's, um, well, the chapter actually is at 11, which is a master number. That's kind of cool. And the one, one to me also represents two or more coming together to create something bi bigger, male, female coming together to create a child, me, you guys coming together to create something greater. And it says celebrating, it says empowerment through expression, celebrating what we are and what we are to become. There's so much empowerment through expression. That's why I love to do my shares. It is totally self-empowering for me because I connect to the light that I am and I express it. When you take action, and it doesn't have to be in a public platform or like this, it can be just, you know, I'm looking at flowers outside I planted. Just through planting that, you're planting, you're anchoring your energy, and those flowers you pick, the way you, the way that you put them together with the other flowers, that is your expression. There's empowerment through expression, because when you express, you bring a focus to it, and that's what culminates, that's what you keep expanding, that's what you keep creating. So it says, expressing our emotions helps us to overcome fear. When we express, it takes a certain amount of trust in ourselves. This pu puts forth energy in motion. It puts forth energy of trust and releases the power of who we are. This energy connects to the power of the universe, because <laughs> you are the universe, to reflect back the energy that we are. We when we repress our emotions, hold them in, try to keep them dark, guys, it causes blockages of energies, just like I was saying. All those little blocks within us where we're afraid to express, where we weren't allowed to express, it does build up. And what do those blockages do? It prevents the other energy, the essence of who we really are, to move through it, to move through it. It deactivates our power and stunts our creativity and expression in who we are. This non-flow of energy also connects to the power of the universe to reflect back to us a stagnant energy. Exactly. That's it's so beautiful because the challenges, the stagnancy, the, the um, stuff that we see in our world that we don't like, it's like saying, yoo-hoo, wake up, I'm just a representation of something stuck within you. You need to shift your perception or shift your awareness. You need to bring this into the light to illuminate, to transmute it into love and light, to find the love in it. This and this stagnant energy is just that. It's just stagnant. It contains potential, but it needs to be activated to be put into motion through emotion, through expression. That's why we chose the physical vessel. It is a perfect vessel to experience all those senses, the taste, the sight, the feel, everything. So when you focus on the cross breath and you just breathe in and you don't know what might be stuck, it does loosen up stuff. Or in John's case, when you do the tapping, it does loosen up stuff. And then that allows a greater expression to come forth. And then if you're allowing higher expressions, which are higher frequency, higher vibrating molecules of love and light, that will be shown in your outside world. And life gives you what you need. You don't need to be searching all this different stuff to fix yourself. Life is the perfect reflection of your energy and it will give you exactly what you need, whether it be through a relationship, like a little mythos here, or, or through your connection to your outside world or an animal speaking to you or a pet or getting fired from a job or going through a divorce or what have you. Those things will tell you about yourself. They're the greatest teachers. Life is the greatest teacher. And if you use it appropriately, you say, how did, I, how did I create that? It does take a certain amount of maturity and ownership. Ownership knowing I played that part in this. I created this. Now it's up to me to change it. And then just ask for your spiritual guidance to help you, to help illuminate that for you. And that's why, you know, people turn to meditation and, or active meditation and breathe. What do they do? They breathe. It helps you to get out of the head, into the heart, and then you can feel into what, what you need to do. You might get thoughts, but then they, they emit emotions, happiness, you, excitement. You know what you need to do. All right, so Mythos will pick um, life. Oh, lifts the energy, yes. But life is energy. Everything's energy. Everything is love and light, guys, and it's up to us. 
as beings of love and light to infuse it, to illuminate every situation from the highest perception that we can conceive, guys. Even if it requires using our imagination, because our imagination, oh my God, it's creative energy, guys. And if we can think it, it can be it. And our imagination allows us to go beyond what maybe we think is physically possible into something that is possible. Could be like, all right, you like, me telling the kids that night, okay, when we were gone, or I'm telling them a little story, and when we were away, I said, all your little puppies were running around, and all your toys were playing with each other. Who says they weren't? And all those stuffies and all those toys are made up of energy, too. They all hold a vibration. Like all right, me. guys. Like you. So, Mythos is uh, doing his schoolwork here, but I'm going to let him pick a guy's guidance, because he loves to participate, right? Yeah. And you've been very patient and did a good job just sitting here. All right. And because we're one with Mother Earth and our heart is one with Mother Earth, these cards all contain a very powerful message just to connect us more fully with the energy of the heart that we are. Okay, handsome, you want to pick a card? Oh, not, not, not. All right, you got to pick that one. All right, handsome. Thank you. So Mithos picked this one, and it is a nice little, uh, this is not in the beach, it's in the woods. It's got lots of little green grass here, nice growth. It is a shape of a, uh, it's a heart-shaped rock embedded slightly in the earth. We got growth here and we got growth here. To me, automatically what I'm feeling is it's showing and portraying our oneness with Mother Earth because it's embedded. It's not just sitting, thank you, Mythos. It's not just yeah. sitting on top of the earth. It isn't separate. We are one with our creation. We have an integral. You, you, have, you outgrow this earth. I outgrow it? Oh, it's just a loose shirt. That's why it falls down. It's loose. I didn't outgrow it. It's just loose. Um, it's showing our oneness. It is showing the cooperative energies that we work with our world. Our co what is it called? Um, Co-creation with each other, with the world, with Mother Earth. We have all collectively, cooperatively, before we even chose this experience, to work together, to co-create. To create the world. In, and through our power of connecting with our heart, we do cause growth. We do create, represented by the grass. The grass represents green. Green represents growth to me. It also represents abundance. And when we see our oneness with Mother Earth, when we don't create that line or shut that door or think we're separate, we're not separate from anything. We are one with all of it. Our energy is embedded in every single experience that we create. We are co-creators with it. And this is just letting us know that. And to embrace it. And, <clears throat> to immerse yourself in that experience and to operate from the heart. That does take a certain amount of strength, maturity, conviction, focus. Good job, handsome. And, and responsibility. True discipline is listening to the heart, tuning into the heart, tuning into mm -hmm. who you really are. Because it's so easy to get distracted. It's easy to blame others. It's easy to um, say, well, the outside world, blah, 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 blah. But guess what? We're... You as an individual are creating your own individual reality. And as a collective, we're creating cool. our collective reality. Suzanne Winston from Dublin. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, so the actual message is no apologies. And what it says is, let me just put these on because certain lighting looks, you know, darker. <laughs> no apologies. And what it says, don't make apologies to anyone for following your dreams. You allow your you follow yours and let others follow theirs. This is how you live your live to. This is how to live your truth. As you follow your dreams, your loved ones are in the hands of God. So it's, it's reaffirming to to follow your dreams, even if it doesn't make sense to your loved ones, to your families, even if you're getting criticized for it. You have to remain strong like this rock. Rocks represent strength, stability, foundation, building blocks. It's saying be strong in following your dreams and never, ever, 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 ever be sorry for tuning into your heart, taking action on your heart, even if others don't understand, especially family members. Sometimes they get mad. They don't understand what you're doing. And all they see is how it affects them because they are temporarily maybe blinded from knowing that we are co-creating. They too have chose this at a certain level that might not be conscious to them. But when you follow your heart in love, it always will work out for everyone because love 
there's no separation in love. So when you follow your heart, there's no separation from you following your heart and your loved ones being taken care of or maybe being guided to go through their process that brings them to a stronger connection of the love that they are. So that is the message for today. And seeing I get a few viewers on and Mythos is here and he's always begging to go live. If any of you guys would like an individual um, card, a little Mother Earth guidance card, a little specific focal point, because what these cards do, guys, and like all oracle cards, they bring a particular focus, a certain message that helps to clear or helps to integrate or helps to bring something to light that could be preventing us from living um, fully in, in this light. So <coughs> God bless you. If anybody wants a card before I uh, sign off, just comment. Or if you have a question, we'll be happy to um, pull a... Guy's guidance for you, a Mother Earth heart oh, card. Um, Mythos will. Mythos will pull it. I'll, sh like I'll, sh her I'll shuffle. Her name is Kim. She says, beautiful. Suzanne says, thanks, Rhea. Melissa, thank you so much. She says, amazing. Kim says, thank you. God bless. You're welcome, Kim. I'll give you guys a minute just to respond if you do want a card. I'm just looking at the comments. It's that simple. Yes, it is simple. Love is meant to be simple, guys. Thank you, heart. Heart. Everything is always the unfolding of what... I love you. I love you. Everything is the unfolding of what we already are, guys. It's just part of that game. It's just part of that illumination. It gives us an opportunity to say, hey, I think I would like to come in and express my gift like this. Bring on this challenge. Bring on this situation. And I'm going to see just how well I can illuminate that situation. I mean, it is that simple. It is meant to be fun, not serious, not heavy. Nettie would love a card. And, oh, whoops. Uh, Sherry Ann would love a card, too. So we'll do Sherry Ann first, Mythos. So we ask that Sherry, knock on the cards and clear them. We ask that Sherry Ann's higher self come forth and present the card that is most resonant or that she needs. Sometimes we don't like what we hear, too, but that she most needs to align to her heart, to express and to bring, uh, let her life reflect the abundance that she is. All right, handsome. So I shook it. What do we got? All right. We got this beautiful. I love this one. It's like a little kite almost. You want to show them? Mm -hmm. What color is that, Mythos? Green. And it like is a, spinach. Like spinach. It's a nice green moist. This looks like it just barely came out of the ocean. It's all still like dripping with moisture. It almost. You eat, you eat spinach. Yeah. What spinach do? Give you muscles. Like who? Papai. Like Popeye. So Mythos always will say little things here, and I take whatever he says seriously, like it's not just whatever random. So if Mythos is mentioning this looks like spinach and that it will give you muscles like Popeye, Sherry Ann, this is, might sound silly, but are you eating a lot of greens, dark greens? Eat your spinach. Spinach has so much iron and minerals and things that the body needs. It's strong. It makes you strong, and it's giving you life... Um, life-giving nutrients. Let me just write this down. And so, yeah, it, it is a mythos says, eat your greens, eat your dark greens, eat your kale, eat your spinach, eat your romaine. A can, can of spinach. A can of spinach, even though I believe fresh is better. <laughs> and so thank you, mythos, for that. And what it looks like is a little kite oh, trailing. Okay, you have to be quiet when I'm talking, though, okay? okay? That's a request from Drusana. So this almost looks like a little heart kite almost it's got like a little trail here and to me what i'm intuitively feeling is when you tune into your heart give give your heart sherry and the freedom to fly okay unconstricted without limits like don't try to hold it down let your heart fly let your let your feelings flow with the feelings that are coming from here feel into them because those feelings that come from your heart and when you tune into the heart vibration, it is higher frequency, just like this little seaweed. This is an actual seaweed seed. And it, it looks like it's elevating. And it is based in love. And it will take you places where you've never conceived. And it is of growth. And the actual message is fun. What do kids do? They fly kites on the beach. They have fun. They go with the wind. They don't live with expectations. They just go. They just go with the feeling. This And I'm getting the goosebumps now, Sherry Ann. This is telling you to just go with the feelings of love. Go with the fun of a child. To connect with that childlike quality within yourself. And what the message is, Sherry Ann, it says fun. 
Having fun is the quickest route to your desires. This lightens up the energy, eliminating resistance, thus opening a clear path for your desires to manifest. Fun is high vibration. Fun is freeing. Fun because it's light, it's open, it's free. It doesn't create any constrictions around it. You can manifest your desires quicker when you're in a good mood. What a beautiful card. So go out, go fly a kite, Sherry Ann. Have some fun. Eat your greens. Life isn't meant to be serious. Actually, the more serious, the heavier the energy and the harder it is to manifest and reflect the reality you want. You want to reflect the energy, emit the energy of a child and connect with your own children, nieces, nephews, siblings, whatever you have. They'll let you see the world through innocent, unfiltered eyes like him here. He keeps me really, really, really connected to that childlike innocence and, and find the beauty and the simplest and the fun and the simplest through how he perceives it. Very beautiful. Thank you, Sherry Ann. All right. So anybody who has joined us, we are Mythos is pulling cards and I'm interpreting them. And Surrender would like a card too. Nettie, you are next on the list. So this card is for Nettie. Let's knock on them. Oh, you're welcome, Sherry. And that was a beautiful energy to read into. I could just feel all of my light vibrating and, and being light like this. Thank you, handsome. I clean, yes, I um, need to have some fun because I clean. stress these few days. And it is easy to get caught in the stress. When you're under stress and you can't figure out a problem, you know what? Go take a bike ride to your nearest snack bar and buy yourself a creamy. Implement what a child would do in those situations. Implement what a child would do. <laughs> and Kim will be after surrender. Kim. Okay, handsome, schmansome. This one is for Nettie. Can you pick a card for Nettie? Any card at all? That one? All right. So this card is for Nettie. I love this one. It looks like rose quartz almost, but it's some sort of granite or something, but it's this big, beautiful rock. I remember we were in a Cadia National Park biking. No, we weren't biking there because there's snow. <coughs> all right. This is all, I think, I don't know where it is now. Anyways, it's got a lot of texture. To me, all this texture shows many different um, energies working in your life. A lot of different variables, a lot of different um, energies you can be focusing on. But not only that, a lot of energies that are working for you from um, different angles that are helping you and you might not understand. And the snow always represents high frequency energy to me. It represents crystallized water. It represents um, the feelings. So sometimes it could go like um, you've got all these high frequencies around you, surrounding you, um, the purity of your soul unfiltered your guides working for you that's what i feel like but also what it's telling me is sometimes snow can represent being cold left out not knowing what to do but in those times if you do go through times or situations where you feel cold where you feel alone where you don't feel what to do where you feel your heart can't open they're there at those times trying to help to soften and warm your heart but because this heart is kind of pinkish, it's telling me that you are immersed in love. It's big love. It's reminding you to stay focused and solid and big and strong in your love. Even in those times where you might be getting cold shoulders or where you might be feeling um, not such a warm environment, not so inviting. You have all the guides around you. You are, through your connection to your heart and remaining solid and focusing on your love, you are creating these high frequency situations to work for you. But the uh, actual mm -hmm. card, you understand. Okay, I wasn't, I wasn't sure. <laughs> okay, so but with the actual message, the verb, the written word is beliefs, and it says, "Are your beliefs creating walls that prevent happiness from reaching you? It is time to expand beyond what you are living and embrace the life that is your birthright." And how do you do that? You focus on the heart that you are. You stay strong in that, and even within this. Within this heart, there's almost like this little other um, lighter colored rock that's in the shape of a heart. Almost like another little um, nugget, like a little pearl. Stay focused on the love that you are and stay strong in who you are. Hold on, handsome. All right, that is, and embrace the life that is your, it is time for you to expand upon what you are living and embrace the life that is your birthright. In truth, you are unbounded. You are unbounded by the walls. Like these the snow could look like a wall, but it's not. Pour a little warm water on it. Put a little warm emotion. It's just going to disintegrate. 
So it's telling you, even in admits when you think there's walls, when you think there's barriers, when you feel you're receiving a gold shoulder, cold shoulder, stay firm in who you are. Stay true to this, this, and it's the love within you that will melt the snow. It'll melt the barriers away. They'll just trickle. And there's almost even a little face in here, like a lion. You see? Oh my God. So, okay, hold on, Mythos. Almost like, here's an eye. Here's an eye. I can see it with my glasses. This is like, a, Mythos, hold on. A lion nose. And then that like mouth with that like little goatee, it's telling you to be strong like a lion in your heart. Stay strong in, in the heart and the love and that will melt away any barriers, any perceived barriers because everything is perception. And you do have love working above you, the guidance. See the little melting of a heart right here, uh, melting like snow and it's in the shape of a heart right there. That is telling you, you are receiving higher frequencies of guidance. There are forces outside of you that are helping, but you are still one with them and you allow them to work for you as you focus on your own love. Then they can help you even greater. And it says, in truth, you are unbounded by the walls of limitations. They're not real. Let go of hindering perspectives and embrace the freedom that is yours. So a lot of times we might base our beliefs on past experiences, things that we've experienced in the past, things that we see in the outside physical world. And it's just telling you that you can let those go because um, essentially you have the power, you have the, you have the strength, you have the power, and it's through the power of love that you change, that you change your outside reality and your manifestations. You have the power. You can let go of those limited beliefs of if people are saying, oh, what are you thinking of trying that? That's just stupid. Tune in here. Be like the lion. Tune into your heart. Stay strong in that. And that will melt away any barriers, any old belief systems. And it will allow you to live in the freedom and expression of who you are. Let the stuff go that feels heavy. If it feels um, limiting, let it go. It's not a truth. It's not a truth. Like I can say, okay, I, I was going to do these cards and I could say to myself, no one's going to want me to interpret images from Mother Earth and hearts that I see. That's ridiculous. Well, the human mind can think that. Other people can tell me that. It doesn't even feel good to think that because it's not truth. <laughs> so let that be a message for all of us, including myself. <laughs> Things that don't feel good are not truth. It's up to us to choose to find the higher perception. You see a crow. Oh, in that in that image. Yeah, I can I can see where you even mean that. I think you see the little beak here. See that little beak? So it can be the beak of a crow. And what you see is personalized for you, Nettie. So if you see a crow, look up crow medicine. Crows, oh my God, for me particularly, they're messengers. They're messengers. So look that up. And they speak and they communicate. Maybe it's telling you to communicate what is in your heart. But you can look up the symbolism or native Indian symbolism of crow. Beautiful. Thank you for allowing us <laughs> to do that. I mean, so true with journey I, I am on. Oh, I'm glad it resonated, Nettie. And Jacqueline, I do have a card for you. And actually what popped out was this. Okay, we'll put that in and we'll redo it. Mythos, clear the cards. Surrender, you are next on our list. Mythos is going to pick the card for Surrender. And what a beautiful name. What a beautiful vibration that name holds. Because when you can surrender and what the, um, the American language would define surrender to be, me, that is a beautiful place because you, you release and let all, and this could be just specifically an intuitive message for you, surrender. When you let go, when you surrender to the life presented, you let go of the barriers you, you let go of resistance, and then you allow new things to form, to come into your being. And I'm getting the goosebumps, so I believe that specifically is for you, surrender. As you surrender to your own life, you no longer resist it, and then you allow the energy to transform and to work for you. Because when you know deep down, or when you can connect to knowing that you are God, you are source energy, and you have created the life and the conditions in your life, they truly are to operate for you. But you can only allow them to operate for you when you surrender to them. Beautiful. Okay, this is for surrender, Mythos. We'll get you a Gaia's Guidance, Mother Earth Heart card, and see what she specifically would like. And when I say she, I'm just talking the divine feminine, the feminine that is connected to you, is, and we are one with, with Mother Earth. Handsome. Pick a card, any card, any card. What card do you want? All right. Okay, don't lick it. <laughs> okay. 
All right, boy, the message is strong with you guys today because I have so many hearts that are on the ocean and you guys are all pulling rocks from the woods. And I'm getting the goosebumps. Solid. There's an overall collective message of being solid, strong, connected, and surrender. <laughs> Thank you, surrender. To the, to the love that you are. Yes, honey? I love you. Okay, love you too. Okay, let me interpret this and you can do the next card. So and here it goes in a little bit. So it's hard to see, but perfect shape of a heart, guys. Solid, strength, connected. And because this rock specifically has the surroundings of more dryness, not so much green growth, it's telling me surrender. And I'm getting the goosebumps that you could be going through a dry time in your life where you're not feeling the nourishment. You're not, maybe you're not feeling the flow or you could be feeling it, but it's not showing in your outside world. This card is telling you, even if you feel your outside surroundings are barren per se, yeah. stay strong in your connection and that will all change. Because a lot of times what we see in our immediate world is old energy. It's energy that we've already put there from our state of being, but we can change that. And sometimes <coughs> it takes, a, there's still that lag time that in the physical, as opposed to the spiritual, there's that lag time before it manifests. This card is saying, stay strong and, and stay connected to your heart. Let your heart be the building block. Let your heart be the foundation for all that you create in your life and be, be strong in that. Even if it doesn't look like that in the outside world, surrender. It's saying be strong, be faithful. Be faithful to, to the heart and, and um, connecting to your love. But the actual message is, it's almost like a test. Sometimes it's a test when you don't see. Not that we, God, no higher force requires tests. The tests are there for us to be, come even stronger in our light and love. And we chose it in order to strengthen our light and love, to strengthen our faith, to strengthen our trust, to and strengthen our power within ourself. And the title is Unblock. It says, details take up space and block the road of miracles trying to reach you. Let it go. The universe needs a clear path to deliver. Your job is simply to match the vibration that you want. And then it can't help but manifest. Your physical world is a match to the vibration that you are so what this card is saying is and i believe you are being strong in who you are but this card is implying there could be details there could be little thoughts in the mind that you think things have to transpire in a certain way or that you may be wondering okay if i do this but how is this going to work it's saying let go of the details and stay strong and tuned in to the frequency of that feeling of what it is you want to manifest. If you want to manifest a world of peace, you can't be looking outside and saying, holy crap, this cousin's fighting. I can't get along with my mother. My kids are out of control. You can't be focusing on those outside things and still create peace. You have to have the peace within and, and tune into that peace, even if it means walking away and just tuning into your own peace. Because if you focus on the outside world and you think that is your definition of what's happening, that's wrong. That's just old energy playing out. And now's the time to let that all go. Don't worry about the details and just focus on the feeling. So go in your room by yourself and imagine, imagine how does it feel for everybody to get along? How does it feel to have those good relationships? And just imagine and go into that. And say, I might not, and, and it's not denying what you see, because you can say, even though I see that, I know that's not the truth of that, and I allow, imagine dragons, imagine dragons. yes, he likes imagine dragons, and so, because Mythos mentioned imagine dragons, I believe there's most likely a, a dragon energy happening around you right now, and in your life, hold on, hold on, hold on, let me get this thought out, dragons are um, transformation, the fire, so I believe you are going through transformation, you are going through a like fire in your life right now, surrender, because Mythos mentioned that, and everything he sa says, I take as um, very meaningful, because he's reflecting something within us that we need to acknowledge, so hopefully, hopefully that helped you. They are one of my spirit animals. So crows are one of Nettie's spirit animals. That's amazing. And that you saw that. And I did see that, but I didn't speak it. So I'm so happy you spoke it. Okay. Thank you, Surrender, for that. And that's a message for all of us. We can't, we can't judge our circumstances or, or where we're going by our circumstances happening presently. Because we always have the power to change that, to shift it through our perception. Not getting caught up in the drama, going within connecting to our love, feeling into what we desire, and then that's how we change it. 
Okay, so surrender. Kim is next on our list, Mythos. Knock the cards. I'll shuffle and then you pull it. Lori. Hey, Lori. Haven't seen you on for a little bit. Glad you joined us. I uh, put you on there. We've got Kim, then Jacqueline, and then Lori. All right, Mythos. This is for Kim. May Kim's higher self present the card Kimmy. that Kimmy. she needs to hear. Kimmy. Kimmy? You like the name Kimmy? All right. What do we got for Kim? Kimmy Beer. I am Kimmy, Kimmy Beer. Kimmy, Kimmy or Gummy? Kimmy, Kimmy Beer. Gimme, give gimme give bears? Okay. Yeah. Anyways, Kim. I am garbage. I am garbage. You singing the gummy bear song? Yeah. Be flexible, Kim. Mythos is talking about gummy bears. And you know how gummies are like kind of chewy, flexible, they mold, they, they're malleable. So um, I believe Mythos is bringing up that energy on your name for a reason. Be flexible, be bo buoyant. <laughs> Buoyant, you float, you don't sink. So keep floating, you're doing a good job. To me, it's telling me, Kim, you're doing an awesome job at being buoyant, staying above the surface. You're not getting pulled under, you're staying above. So that's good. Pick a card for Kim. I mean, I'm hungry. Hold on. So, Kim, oh my, I can't believe this, guys. Another solid rock. I have never done this many cards. Oh, except for the very first one that, um, that, for Sherry Ann, hers was a seaweed, but you guys are getting so many rocks, which to me rep represents always being strong, being solid, being firm in your foundation, anchoring, anchoring your energy. But what appears, what shows this is these two little lines, almost look, it looks like they're scars. And to me, what I'm intuitively picking up, Kim, is you might've experienced some scarring of your heart. You might've feel like, not of your own fault, but you might have feel like a an innocent bystander or almost like a victim, and you got these scratches, just almost like these two lines over your heart. There could have been two incidences that, that have really um, hit you. They've caused a groove. They might sometimes cause you, because I said groove, grooves kind of pull you in, kind of like a rut when you go four wheeling, I always use that analogy, kind of pulls you in. It's reminding you not to get pulled in by um, by old experiences. Cool. Thank you so much, Surrender, you're welcome. Blessings to you too, and may you have a beautiful day, and may you shine with the entirety of all the light that you are, Surrender. Um, so say not, don't, Yes, Mythos, those aren't yours. Okay, let me re let me focus here. I gotta feel into the energy. Don't let those old situations and old energies um, keep you from being strong in your heart, Kim. Mm. It's as if they're healed. You've done a lot of, to me, it's telling me you've done a lot of healing work. You've done a lot of internal healing. But once in a while, I feel sometimes you can slip back into the feelings that are still... Um, holding within your cell memory, uh, memories of oh, him. maybe where injustice or where you were hurt a little bit, loss of your parents. Oh my God, and I get the tingles. That is affirmation. And because there's two lines, if you lost both your parents, Kim, I, yeah, I feel that big time. That was very, um, wow, you're right on. So that could Just be the Kim. loss of your parents have hurt Just, you. You might have had, Kim. yep, that's Kim. You might have... Um, <laughs> had some Kim, healing Kim, Kim. you lost your parents and you might have still had healing work that wasn't fulfilled Kaya. or maybe completed with them Kaya. but <clears throat> Kaya. Okay. um yeah so not just the loss there might have been maybe you feel unresolved issues or maybe energies or it could have simply been you didn't let you may feel they didn't you know didn't get that healing exchange like me. love i don't know like maybe okay handsome sit down for a minute i got focus um thank you for the love though you might have felt there wasn't something complete and finished while they were here but it's they're saying and i'm getting goosebumps they're with you now there is nothing to finish things are as they should be i'm feeling i'm getting all the goosebumps my entire body things are exactly and happened exactly as they should for the greater good of them and you they're sending you eternal love and light. They are with you. There's nothing to forgive. I don't know why they're saying that. I don't know if there was a little anything that went on in the physical world between you and your parents, but there's nothing to forgive. 
Love heals all. It's all was for the experience, for the expansion of love. My dad died when I was nine. Wow. You, 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 you daddy died. No, Kim's daddy died. Wow, so oh. young. So young. So I can see how that would have, you would have felt such a loss of not having your parent, your father there, you, that father your mommy figure. Died. I wish me, our mommy died. Her mommy died. Her mommy and daddy died. So yeah. So the pain in that, there, that situation was to help you. It was part of, it was part of your contract with your dad and, to cultivate and I you. I'm not dying. In your purpose I just mean, as an adult. I'm not dying. No, not right now, I hope. So I, I'll read the message, Kim. I'm sure you will get more out of this even than what I have spoken. But this is definitely acknowledging the loss of your parents, the connection and the love bond that is still there. And they want you to keep focusing on evolving and expanding that beautiful, beautiful soul that you are. They know you're beautiful. They connect to that soul. Your dad is extremely, uh, you, your dad cherishes you. He cherishes you. Even if I you missed you, out on the experiences I love you. of you growing up. He cherishes you, and he's there. He's there in the non-physical. As you, as you know, I know you know that. I love you. Oh, that's why you got unfinished. Because she I didn't. Love you. Thank you. I love you too. Yeah. So that's why you feel unfinished. You didn't. You didn't get to establish that father-daughter bond into adulthood, and you know all that that entails. Okay. So what this says is, behold your beauty, Kim. The beauty that you behold in others is but a mere reflection of your own. It gives you a glimpse of yourself from an outside perspective. Appreciate the beauty that surrounds you, for it is the same as appreciating and admiring your own. It infuses you with love. So this is telling you as you do admire the outside world, as you see the beauty in others, as you see the beauty in other father-daughter relationships. And I'm getting all the tingles. Don't feel denied. Don't feel that you were denied or cheated out of that. Know that it is infusing the relationship, even though it doesn't appear the typical father-son relationship, even though he's in spirit. Know when you admire a father-daughter relationship, a close bond, that you are enhancing your relationship with him. Even though he's not in physical, he is more present with you now, more pure. All I can say is he's, he's brighter than he could have been on earth. And he shares that relationship with you. Um, and as you appreciate and see the beauty in anything in general, you are infusing yourself with that love because everything is a reflection of your beauty. All right. Thank you so much, Kim, for allowing us that. Thank you for um, letting us know that the two lines were you lost your parents. And one, I don't know if you lost your mom sooner, but yeah, with this line being shorter too, it shows that maybe no, the time was shorter never too. Never lost you. You never lost me. All right, so we've got Jacqueline. If you're still here, Mythos, clear the cards. I got I got I got shuffle them. May Jacqueline's higher self. So yeah, I feel there was a very strong message, Kim, and I'm feeling it now. He's reemphasizing. He really wanted to come through to you, specifically your dad, because of of your feeling of loss and not getting that time with him. He's, and he's just really proud of you, and he wants you to stay tuned to your heart and, and your truest expression, and he's helping you with that. That's that's why mom died in 2012, so not as long ago. And she's obviously with you too, but I feel, yeah, the, the message today and the card today and through your interaction was definitely to do with your dad. And I don't know if you communicate with them intuitively and stuff, but he would like... Um, time where you where you're by yourself and you do communicate out loud as if he was physical he wants you to talk to him as if he and you probably already do that and if you do he appreciates it and continue but speak to him as if he's here because he is thank you cam you too all right this is for jacqueline, jacqueline. it's already been magical <laughs> this jacqueline yep that was jacqueline okay so jacqueline's higher yourself what card does jacqueline need to hear to help her be a more illuminated Banded heart imprint. Oh, I think that one's coming out. But okay. Okay, Kim, or not Kim, Jacqueline, you've got a shell. <laughs> and you've got a shell with a little imprint of a cutout heart. 
It's a clamshell. It's on the ocean. Like surprise out another stone that come you out. You clear me. You feel clear me. Do you feel clammy? Mythos wants to know if you're feeling under the weather or clammy or sticky. I don't know. He mentioned that for a reason. Look. Yeah, she sends love. Thank you, Mythos. Kim says also thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you, Kim. Thank you for allowing us to share in that energy. Because I as someone feel, brings I'm, something not, like that, I not feel clammy. you don't feel clammy. As someone brings an energy like that, we're still aspects of each other. And so there could be some healing that you viewers have, or those who watch the replay, or even myself have with a loss. So through Kim's interaction and her dad presenting and Kim sharing, it gives us an opportunity to also share in that healing energy. Because we're not separate, we are all one. And all messages are for all of us in some little tiny way, shape, or form. It just not might be as focused as it is for some individuals. So I love this white, white, pure clamshell, and it's got the imprint of a heart, and it's telling me, you know how clams are cut, cut, you know, they close really, really, really tight, Jacqueline? To me, it's almost like it's really, really could be really dark in there, but you infuse the darkness with your love. And if you are going through situations, that do feel dark and I'm picking up family for some reason, relationships, and they seem like there's no way out or someone's going through a hard time or even depression, through your connection to your love and sharing in that, you help to illuminate and bring light to the darkness through your love. White represents like this purity, high frequency, soul connection, innocent, connection I'm to child. I'm, I'm innocent. Yes, you are innocent. And this is on the beach, so it's to do with the feeling and, and feeling into that and expressing that. Because when it's on the ocean, the ocean is always in motion. There's an ebb, there's a flow, there's a give, there's a take with the waves. And this is just um, urging you to do that. And through your connection to the love and not the darkness, that's how you change your situations and infuse the light in those situations. So I don't know if it's a relationship or not. I'll read the back in a second. Um, but don't get caught up in the darkness and the negativity and the heaviness of the energy. Remain true, connect to the light, even if you can't see the light. Always trust and know there is the light. Okay, this is what it's telling you. Know that there is light in the dark situations because this kind of baffled me. Even the cutout looks really, really dark of the heart and it's telling you to know, even if you can't understand, there is light in those negative, what we would label negative situations of darkness even evil there's there is light and, and not, you have I'm the power evil. to infuse I'm it to connect into your own light oh, well, i'm not evil yet no you're not evil yet and and just knowing that and knowing without the without the evidence is extremely high frequency because what does that take it's trust and it is a lot harder to trust the situation without knowing than in knowing and that's where the high frequency comes in because you're choosing to believe in something greater than what is seen and that is believing in love and love is a very high frequency. The actual message is devil's gift. So what this says, Jacqueline, is the devil is a symbolic representation of an energetic disconnect within oneself. The devil can be symbolized as a physical or energetic projection onto the material world. It could be substituting something physical for that that can only be found within. And again, the clam and going within. It could also represent <laughs> oppressed emotions. The devil offers us a gift. Once the devil is exposed and its attributes transcended, it leads us to the realization of our true identity, complete, whole, and very, very powerful. So what this card is saying is you might be experiencing some darkness, a devil situation, even addictions. Devils sometimes represent addictions, not necessarily with yourself, could be with someone in your life. And what the addiction is, is you're trying to fulfill and fill that space in that oh, hole oh, oh, that can only be um, filled. Oh, it's a relationship that will end. That will, um, <clears throat> some people try to, in the outside world, use the physical stuff to, to, uh, to fill that need, that hole, that emptiness within themselves because they, they need to connect to the light that they are. They, without this connection, we sometimes look for the outside world to fill us and nothing will fill us other than knowing who we really are. I pull my lap. Okay, you pulled your lap. So if you're in a relationship that's ending, that could be you. Maybe you were, 
using that relationship or they were with you in a non-healthy way, almost like, what is, what is it called? Um, when you depend on someone. Um, or codependent or fulfilling a need that people for a good relationship have to be whole and connected to the source God within themselves. Not that we don't help each other to evolve and expand into greater versions of ourselves, but if it's just diminishing, if it isn't allowing the light to come through, if a relationship isn't allowing your light to come through, then it is um, based, I don't want to say the devil, but the the end trying to substitute energies that can only be found within. That's all I can say. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but this relationship might have something to do with either one, both, and I don't know if it's romantic, but substituting the outside world to be that satisfaction that can only be found within. And, and relationships, sometimes they come together to help us realize that, and then done, they're done. It's time to release it. They help us to grow or realize something. That, that we aren't willing to compromise or something within ourselves that that needed that needed that situation in order to connect to something deeper within ourselves, which is always light and love. And look at, see this clam, it is whole. It's very, very whole. You are whole, Jacqueline. You are very whole. Focus on your wholeness, focus on your purity, focus on your light. And then you will attract a relationship that is representative of this, of this light and this love. Focus on self-love, nourishing the self. Because sometimes bad relationships or relationships that tweak us or trigger us, and not that we have to let go of all of them. Sometimes we work through them, but they are just reflecting some things in ourselves that we need to exemplify or amplify or illuminate. Hey, goodbye. Hey, goodbye. So hopefully this helped you in some hey, way, goodbye. shape, or form, Jacqueline. Hey, goodbye. God bless you and hip and, goodbye. Uh, I hip goodbye. Yes, I wish you the the highest outcome hip for that. Hip goodbye. Hip goodbye. Hip goodbye. I'm not sure what that means. Okay, so this card is for Lori. Whoop! Knock on him. And then I think that we will be done, Mythos. That was fun on a rainy day, huh? Yeah. To do a few readings. It's not raining anymore. Um, it doesn't look too good out there. Yeah, I think it's still raining. It's supposed to clear up around 1. It's or stop raining. It's not hard raining. Not hard raining, no. Not downpouring. So this card is for Lori. Lori's higher self. Present the card that's most appropriate. I love you, Mommy. <laughs> All right. Pick a card for Lori. Any card, any card, any card. I love you, Mommy. Oh, I love you, too. All right. So what we got here... Is this little perfect shape of a little heart on the side of the road when I was running? It's like fuzzy, almost like it could have been a some sort of plant or fuzzy. flower. It's it's got a more of a fuzzy texture though, not like a petal, but more fuzzy. And this little guy here is almost looks like a pig side view. I gotta show you this. Okay, so you see the heart, Lori, but look at the side view. It's almost like here's an eye. He's standing on his little, you know how pigs got those little hooves? Almost like they're all pointed down and connected. Almost like little hooves. It look almost like a little, um, and you might see it as a person. Yeah, it's not as piggish as I thought now, but a little person. Like, see the mouth here open? See the little nose? Of course, the back doesn't look like a pig. It looks more like a tail feathers. But the lip has got... got Define pink in it, which is kind of weird. Right, so maybe you'll right, maybe you'll pick up or see something. Right. Maybe you'll pick up or see something in the image of this animal. But Tamoy also also always represents, you know, tuning into the innocent, tuning in unfiltered to your energy. Um, guides helping you. There are guides and outside energies that are helping you and sending you love and light. Those that you do communicate with is telling me you do have. Spirit guides, whether it be loved ones, I'm feeling loved ones though that have passed on, that are there helping you to connect, yeah. to send you love and light. Almost like, I don't know if you're calling out to them. Are you calling out to spirits or praying to non-physical in some way, shape, or form, Jacqueline? Or not Jacqueline, sorry, um, Lori? Almost like you're calling out. Outside, your, your energy is grounded, you're on Mother Earth, and it's almost like your mouth is wide open. So this is telling me, no. Don't be. It's telling me I'm picking up intuitively, Lori. Yeah. Call out for help. Call out for guidance. Outside unseen forces can't help you without your, um, your permission. So call out. 
It's also telling me to express, express what you want, express what you need, even um, sing out praise, thank yous. It's like you're outside in this little heart, but it looks like it's morphed into a little animal or being of some sort, and it's out there just calling out. And, and because it's pink, okay, I couldn't understand the pink on the lip. See that pink on the lip? Singing, and I'm looking my outside and I see pink. a pink petunia pink. flowers out my there. My mom's not pink. Not too pink. And that's the love connection, the higher heart. So it's saying call out, ask for the help from loved ones. Past or not past, because we're all connected through energy. The only difference is the physical vessel. You just don't see it. It's not solid. You could even ask. Sorry, I had a phone call. You can even ask for help from those that aren't with you, that could be in another country, but the energy connects. Energy connects, guys. There's no separation between energy, whether, you, whether you've passed on, whether you're physical, non-physical. So it's saying to communicate, mm -hmm. call out to those individuals, and to sing thanks, thanks, praise, appreciation. And you're, and you're planting that energy in your physical world because it's that stands out, those little like legs there, almost looks like a little pig hoof. But even though it looked like a pig, but it's not. But regardless, it's planting that energy in your physical reality. They want you to ask for help. They want you to communicate with loved ones passed on and in the physical form. And because the eye is faced up, that to me is just representative of higher frequencies, higher help, love. You're wanting, you're wanting to um, receive guidance of high frequencies of love and help and, and to thank and praise. Praise all your surroundings too, all around you. It's almost like this little being is out there praising, communicating. All right, the actual message for you, Lori, is find. It says whatever it is you're looking for, and it is almost like maybe they're looking, asking for help. It says whatever it is you are looking for, it will find you. For when you stop trying so hard, you release up the energy for the universe to deliver. And isn't that kind of what he's doing? It's kind of like that little being is releasing up energy, speaking, expressing. So if there's something you're looking for, it will find you through your energetic vibration of being that energy. So, and if you feel you need help, express it. Express it. And through the gratitude and thankfulness, you do help to ground that very energy you're looking for to earth because you're in a state of appreciation. And when you're emitting appreciation, gratitude, thankfulness, the universe is saying, oh, she's so happy. She's so grateful. We got to deliver, which is really you, but we got to manifest to keep that happiness going. So it's almost like you're praising, you're communicating, and you're expressing. And whatever you're looking for, it'll find you. It will find you, Lori, no doubt. It's affirmation. If there's something in your life you're wanting, it will manifest. And it is coming. But express. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to communicate with those in your physical world and out there. Say your, say your prayer. And it's all, I mean, they'll say your prayers. Sort of like say your prayers. Say your prayer, prayers of thankfulness and gratitude and know what is yours will not pass you by. For you are the energy of abundance. And when you're grateful and you're appreciating, you become that abundance in action. And then universe, the world, will deliver that abundance and action in front of you because that is what you are being. All right, guys, I think um, I think that's it for today, guys. I don't think there were any others, any other requests. I appreciate you. Mythos and I both appreciate you joining us and allowing us to work in your energy for we're all connected. So energies of love, encouragement, guidance, affirmation, healing. It not only helps those that are tuned in and asked to receive it, but it helps those who are all watched and it helps us. It helps that energy to work through us and keep, keep everything moving. So thank you so much, guys. <laughs> and like always, may you shine with the entirety of all the light that you are.